A tsunami is a disturbance of the ocean uh, created by any large disturbance, like it could be an earthquake, it could be a volcanic eruption, it could be a meteor hitting the ocean. So these are large objects that hit the ocean, and they look, if you could look at it from space, like a pebble going into a pond. And once it strikes the ocean, it disturbs the surface, and then waves radiate out. So we have one characteristic is it's a big disturbance, second characteristic is multiple waves. So there'll be several waves that are associated with tsunamis, that's why we call it a series of waves generated by any large disturbance of the sea surface of the ocean. So in a local tsunami, you'll feel the earthquake, and that's nature's warning that you should evacuate. If you're on the beach, say on vacation, or if you're at home and you're in an inundation area, you feel the earth shake, that's nature's warning. You don't need official warning to tell you to evacuate. Just go, okay? And a distant tsunami, uh, you won't feel the earthquake, so you can't use that as nature's warning. So you'll probably get a warning from this in the U.S. from the uh, NOAA Tsunami Warning Centers, or if you're in other countries, you may get it in, in other forms of a tsunami warning. If you get a tsunami warning, evacuate. They, they're telling you there's danger. But in the event there isn't a local warning system, then there's two signs that you need to keep in mind. One is the water will, will withdraw. It'll be an extremely low tide. You know, things that are not exposed are exposed, like reefs or rocks. And the second uh, natural sign of a tsunami approaching is a loud roar. Some people described it like uh, hundreds of jet engines rolling at you. So if you happen to hear jet engines from the ocean, it's at night, for example, and you can't see that the water's receding, that's a natural sign. So distant tsunamis, water withdrawal, noise, local tsunamis, you feel the earthquake, all those are natural warnings that a tsunami's present and you should evacuate inland as fast as possible. When you're on the beach and you see a wave break and then you see another wave break, the, just the time between those wave breakings is about six seconds. So if you're sitting on the beach, you just count them. You crash, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, crash. Okay, it's gonna take about 150 of those six second waves to give you an idea of the time scale involved of a tsunami withdrawing and then coming back in. And you may think that's a long time, 15 minutes. Well, if you're running for your life, it's not. The tsunami's gonna be coming in at about 20 miles an hour. And so you cannot run 20 miles an hour. The fastest man in the world can run about 20 miles an hour for 10 seconds, but you can't, you're not an athlete of that caliber. So you cannot outrun that tsunami. So I think that's very uh, appropriate for you when you see the water withdrawal, take off. Because when it comes back in, it's gonna be faster than you can run. If you live in an area which you know will be flooded by a tsunami, then you have the most critical piece of information. You will be flooded. So you need to practice in at least once a year evacuating. And while you're doing these drills annually, you should be looking for things that could go wrong during that evacuation. Would a telephone pole fall over and block your passageway down the route that you've chosen? Will a power line be there? Will it, will it electrocute you? Uh, and the other thing you might want to th consider is looking for sturdy buildings. In the unlikely event that the tsunami comes faster than you can outrun it, and you know that you're going to be engulfed by the tsunami, you want to go up, you want to go vertical. And these annual drills in which you're practicing evacuation, you would like to identify those buildings that in the event you need to go up, would go up. And the characteristics of those buildings are reinforced concrete and access. Make sure that you can get up those stairs physically and make sure that those stairs are not blocked uh, by gates or by garbage cans or something. So you need to be thinking as you do your annual drills about two things. Can I get out safely and what could go wrong? And two, in the event I can't get out, can I go up?
Re-entering the tsunami inundation zone after the tsunami's passed is a very dangerous thing. Um, as we've talked about before, there's lots of debris that will be blocking roads. There's lots of uh, uh, hazardous material that will be on the ground, either diesel from boats or propane or natural gas lines that may be in, your, in the area in which you live. These are all hazards to your health. And you should not re-enter that inundation zone until the local authorities, that's the local police people, tell you it's safe to return. Because they are dealing with a lot of issues right now. And the last thing they need to deal with is you're going in there and getting injured because you went back too soon. Then we've got more people to take care of, more people to, to, to um, try to survive or try to help survive. So don't add to the complexity of this evacuation. Don't add to the disaster by going in too soon. Stay out until you're told it's safe to return. First responders, this, you're a special class of people. We need you. And we don't need you to be a hero for one or two people. Unfortunately, in every one of these cases we hear about, there are people who, for whatever reason, are not able to evacuate the area or they choose to stay there and put themselves in harm's way. We can't tell you how long the tsunami is going to be dangerous based on the science. That's going to be a local call. But you can be sure there's going to be multiple waves. And what you don't want to do as a first responder is try to go in between waves, which could be 15, 20 minutes, and try to rescue somebody because you could be trapped and killed. And if you're trapped and killed, you can't help anybody. And that's what we have to make clear to first responders is that their job is to help save the masses, help the masses, the hundreds, the tens, hundreds, maybe a thousand people that are going to be left after this, this disaster subsides. But you have to be there. We cannot lose you. So please use good, cautious judgment in approaching a tsunami area during a tsunami. Stay out. That's the advice. Uh, training and preparedness is an ongoing task that's up to you. It's an individual responsibility. You must take it seriously, but based on what you know about tsunamis and based upon what you know about your local community, you, there's no reason for anybody to die. We have lots of cases in tsunamis where in one part of the, an area that was affected by the earthquake, thousands of people died and 50 miles away, no one died. And the explanation between these two, who survived and who didn't survive, is basically education and training. So I urge you through training, education, and preparedness to save your life, your family's life, your loved one's life. And if we all do this together, no one will die during the next tsunami.